Princess Maggie Bot. Uh, today I want to talk to you all about Mystic Veil. A copy of Mystic Veil was actually provided to me for review. Um, I'm hoping that it did not influence my decisions or opinions, but you might as well know that up front. Uh, if you stick around after the review portion of this, you can see some of the setup of the game. Uh, normally I would put this in front of the review, but if you've not played this before, you could just jump down in the timestamps down in the description below. Uh, so Mystic Veil, it, at its very, very heart, is a Dominion. And I say this in both that it is a deck builder of sorts and that it is the first time you're going to see a mechanism used in a game and it will influence future games. Just the same way that you played Dominion the first time and said, wow, this deck building thing is going to be a thing. Wow, this card drafting thing could be a thing. So Mystic Veil vale is two to four players. It's about 45 to 60 minutes, I'd say, once you know it. I want to see the teaching games go a little bit long, and that is because the game itself, um, everyone's going to have a deck of cards that are sleeved, and what you do is you purchase clear overlays that go into the card to affect its stats as you go, and that's why it's called a card crafting system. Um, so whatever you can see is the new uh, abilities of the card. It's not like Gloom, you don't actually usually cover anything. There's only one aspect of this game that is covered, but um, it does involve all these cute little clear overlays. So, what of that? Um, the cards themselves, the decks, they come with sleeves. They are really heavy duty um, tarot sized sleeves. AEG provides 100 of them in the box. There's only 80 cards to sleeve. So it's a pretty, pretty good deal, especially now, right now, Fantasy Flight Tarot sleeves are out of stock, so you'd have to get Ultra Pro or Mayday. Um, the sleeves themselves are that really nice, thick, pr premium stock. It feels just like a premium Mayday sleeve, like, no joke. It doesn't quite feel like Fantasy Flight because the edges are different, but it feels just, just like the premium Mayday. It's a really good quality sleeve. Um, you are shuffling the deck a lot, so so over time you would probably have to purchase another pack of sleeves, but if you're playing a game so much that you need to buy sleeves for it, I never think that that's a bad thing. Um, the amount of money you can spend schnazzing up a, a, a card or board game, uh, a pack of sleeves is usually well worth your investment. Um, the overlays themselves are uh, thin plastic and um, they're during the, the machining process for these, they figured out that they needed um, a small coating of like a plastic, kind of like you'd see on a brand new cell phone. Um, and so the first few times you play, you probably just leave that plastic on these. And then eventually, and I don't know if you could see it on camera, but this one was starting to peel away. So you can just peel the rest of the advancement like that, and then you have your card. Um, I don't think there's gonna be a huge problem with the scratching. Uh, Gloom, if you've ever played a lot of Gloom, you notice that the scratching could make the cards illegible. I haven't had any trouble with scratching over the parts with writing. You can definitely see it, see it on the clear parts. I can even see it on this one, and this copy's only been played five or six times, but I don't think it's gonna be overall a very big deal. Um, the cards, uh, are pretty easy to read once they're on a table in really good lighting. They did take some, they, they have a bit of text on them. So this is not lang language independent unless you have someone that's good at uh, constantly reading cards out to people. So this is very English dependent at this point. Um, the, the writing is pretty small, but what would have needed to happen if the writing was any bigger, these cards would have had to have been like bigger than Dixit cards. So right now you just have a nice tarot sized card that gets up to three advancements on it that sometimes have writing. So that could be a downside to this game. You need good lighting, you need to be able to read, uh, and you need to know English at this point. Uh, so that should be noted. Um, otherwise, everything feels very nice. The card quality is really nice. Um, the veils themselves are on the same size cards, so if you like the aesthetics of sleeving, you could sleeve these. Um, there's no real need to. They don't get shuffled. They just sit on a table and then sit on the table on your side once you have them. So you shouldn't need to. Um, the art in this game, although I'm not super arty, is really beautiful. It really, um, the 
cover is a good example of the type of art you're gonna find in it. Very nature heavy, because it's all druids, right? And um, beautiful on green and blue, which is totally in my aesthetic. So I really love the art and the characters. Um, the characters are not super diverse as far as I've been able to tell, um, but there are lots of women, so that's a very nice thing. You just don't, you have kind of one skin tone on all the people. That's fine. Um, I would always encourage and love to see more diversity put into skin tones, body types, but what are you gonna do? Um, there is one major concern in this game from um, a lot of perspectives. It's, it's important to note um, if you have put advancements onto a card, it starts to feel thicker than the other cards. You can actually tell that it's been edited, it's not quite as floppy, and it feels heavier. So if you've ever done anything that requires precision in picking things up at all, like food service or any type of factory work, um, you're going to be able to immediately tell that a card is edited before you've looked at the front. This shouldn't matter in this game because there is a pressure like element. You're looking at a card at the top and you know I'm going to move this card to reveal the next card. So you shouldn't have felt the card below it before you do that. So you shouldn't be able to use that to your advantage. Uh, in future games that use a card crafting mechanic, they're going to have to watch out for that because if it used a different method of card draw or something, that could really start affecting your gameplay. So people should take note in case they want to use this mechanic in something else, which by golly, you're, you're going to play, play this game and see all of the other cool things that can be done with this type of editing technology. It's kind of reminiscent of what legacy games are trying to do, writing on the cards, ripping up the cards, writing on the boards, whatever, but it's doing it as a mechanic, a mechanism within a game itself. Um, Card editing in this game is really novel. Um, it feels really cool to be able to slide these weirdo overlays into the deck and the first time a card or an overlay comes up as a card you can play, it feels really good. It captured that feeling from Dominion really well. Um, you maybe trash two coppers and put like a really high-end card in your deck and it comes up and you're like, oh man, that's sweet. That is bottled into this game really well and deftly. Um, I think that the novelty is not a gimmick necessarily. I think it's just a really cleverly well done way of editing a game as you go without making permanent changes like a legacy game. They really did balance that line really well. That being said, this game is definitely on the medium lightweight. Um, if you've played Dominion or Deck Builders, it's going to be very familiar, very easy to teach. And I think after eight or nine plays, you're going to be ready for more cards. Is that good or bad? I think that's up to the player themselves. I can't wait to try more cards out in this. Um, there is definitely a point where you've played four or five games and when you teach, you crush people. So you're gonna wanna maybe just teach people and let them play with other people who haven't played before. Um, experienced deck builders are, deck building players are gonna do better in this game than people who haven't played a deck builder. But at this point, I would be very surprised if there are a lot of players who haven't tried at least one. Um, it is more fun. The setup is kind of silly because it's kind of hard to shuffle all these types of clear cards and stuff. Now, who is this game ultimately for? I think it is for fans of deck builders. I think it's fan fans of kind of more of a nature -y aesthetic, uh, just beautiful druidic world. And I think um, if you love that feeling, it's it's that ascension dominion feeling. They've they've captured it in a very different way here. Uh, made me really happy to play it because dominion was never really my jam, but I loved ascension. Um, so what's next in this world? I'm really excited to see what else can be done with this. I kept thinking about like, okay, what if it's a small deck with little overlays that you put into your deck um, to give you effects or to uh, how you level up characters in games, uh, just as reminder text and stuff like that. There's so many interesting things you could do. and. What I'm wondering, and what I'd love to hear from AEG, is how expensive this was to produce. Was Is this something that could be more normalized? Uh, how, how exactly did the little clear overlays get made? Is this really awful for the environment, worse than the wood or cardboard that comes in a regular game? I'm very curious to know how 
attainable this type of um, thing is for future games and other titles. Um, is AEG going to make a series of these? I have heard rumblings that there is another game with the card crafting system already in the works and that it'll be a little heavier, which would be nice for me. Uh, I, I do like the game a lot. Um, I think this game has a really nice moment where you have to switch over from just gaining resources to building victory points, just like every good engine builder. Um, the victory points, the physical ones, are only earned by one type of symbol, so you have to start prioritizing those, as well as competing for valuable veils. The veils can give you uh, points or just symbols every turn or abilities and these are really strong um, so not competing with these is going to put you somewhat at a disadvantage. I have played five games so far, mostly teaching games one replay which was great, um, but I will say that my plays of this has been super enjoyable. I do think they might have a hit on their hands. Again, this was a review copy, so take that as you will. But I honestly find myself really excited for what's coming next in this line. And AEG, yes, the hype train has been really strong on this game. I don't know how many reviewers they sent this out to. It is probably in the 30s. I don't know. If I, if I made the list, there's got to be a huge hype train around it. But I think it's because they want to set it up for as much of a success as it could be and I think that they ordered a crap ton of it because wow have they done a good job of making people interested but it's also getting to the point where the the hobby gamers the niche gamers are going yeah well gimmick 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 I'm like yeah well gimmick but fun novel yeah okay no okay so <laughs> Overall for me, um, I really enjoyed it and will encourage people to play it with me. I'm going to take it to Game Swap tomorrow and try and get a game of it going, and I will see y'all next time. So unlike what I normally do in a full vlog, I'm actually going to show you a little bit of the layout and some of the card structure on in the, the game. Um, so Mystic Veil vale is two to four players. The player count is going to affect a couple of different things. It's going to affect your level one advancements as well as the number of victory points it takes until you trigger the end of the game. Uh, this is your basic set out. Um, you will also have a number of victory points that you put onto the board. Depending on the number of players, this works just like Race for the Galaxy where as you uh, collect your 28th point or anyone depletes the point bank, that's going to trigger the end of the game. You're going to go until everyone has equal amounts of turns and then the game will be over. So as you can see, there are several sets of cards. There are regular opaque cards. These work just like the cards in Valeria Card Kingdoms or an enchantment in magic these you purchase and then they give you a permanent effect um, there are both level ones as well as level twos and they're the level twos are just generally more expensive and good than the level ones um, then you have three different levels of advancement cards advancements are those clear overlays that you're going to use in your deck um, the level threes are the eight to ten cost ones the level twos which i have a couple upside down here are the four or five to seven cost and the level ones are two to four cost you have three of them per level if ever you run out of level ones you will replace them with level twos you will always have nine advancements to choose from and you have some fertile soils up at the top these are just like the basic coppers almost in um, dominion and you're going to want to put these out at the top and these will get you um, just something you can purchase if you don't have something better in that round. Um, because this is kind of a game that's not out yet, I figured I'd do a little bit more of a rules overview than I normally would. Or here is the setup, and then we'll go into some impressions. Step two, after you set it up, let's talk about the player decks. So the player decks come in four different colors on the back, but they're all identical in the front. And they are comprised of cursed lands um, like this, where they have one of these red spoil symbols and a white mana blank cards and fertile soils, which will just give you one generic mana. Um, there are nine cursed lands in the deck, which is really important to know during the course of the game. So uh, the whole point of this game and why it's different and why I'm doing the preview and why you're curious about it is that during the course of the game, it works just like a regular deck builder where you have a certain amount of buys and sells, um, but you are purchasing clear overlay cards like this. And those clear overlays get added to cards. 
<laughs> can't do it shaky on camera. They get added to cards like this. And now they are imbued with that ability. So this is now a druid song. Um, it cost me four mana. It produces a wild resource which purchases veils. And it gives me one victory point at the end of the game. Now let's say, oh boy, I'm heating up here. I bought a second one. I can also slip that card down onto... I can slip that advancement onto the card, and now this no longer just produces a purple, but it also produces victory points. So, woo. this card no longer just produces a purple, but it produces victory points and a spoil symbol and a yellow symbol. So, it does a lot more now than it did before. Um, it is also worth two more victory points at the end of the game. And as you can see, the card is getting a little thick because you're adding advancements to it. Um, I will show you in the gameplay where this won't actually affect your game in Mystic Veil, but could affect future plays. Um, and you could even, if you have enough resources, when it is this card is in play again, you could add another card to this. So you can only ever have three advancements on a given card, so you're going to fill up the middle bottom and top, and um, there are also some small effects that will be written sideways here. This one works more like Gloom, where whatever's on the topmost part that you can read through the sleeve is what is active, so you can't cover up end of game victory points to use better effects later. But this is what the cards look like when they are imbued. And now let's get a little bit more into gameplay, and then we'll talk about my thoughts. Okay, so let's take a quick look at what a turn looks like, and then we'll talk about the game. So, on a turn, you have your deck, and at the very beginning of the game, and every turn subsequent to that, you will reveal cards onto your field until you have revealed three red symbols. That is spoils. Now, as soon as you do, the last one stays at the top of your deck. Now, at the beginning of your next turn, you get to either keep what you have in play, which in this case would be two mana, or I can press my luck by revealing another card on the top of the deck and hoping not to hit a fourth red symbol. The second you hit a fourth red symbol, you've actually lost your turn, um, which is not so devastating in this game, but it always feels a little bit bad to lose your turn. If you do lose your turn, you get to flip your little mana marker over, and this can be used as a free mana in a future turn to purchase something. If you already have that free mana and you spoil, you just don't get anything. But you may do that as many times as you like. So now that I pressed my luck once, I have three mana to spend, so maybe that's a little bit more advantageous to whatever cards came up in the market. Um, if I wanted to keep going, I could, and just hope that I don't hit a red symbol. Now this is where it comes into play where you can count your red symbols in both on your field at the top of your deck and in your discard because if uh, three or four of them are in your discard and you only have six cards left in your deck, you know out of the nine you've got a pretty good chance of hitting another red symbol. So math comes a little bit into play here. It's not necessary, necessary to enjoyment of the game but it can be very important if you'd like to play well. The other thing I should mention here is that as you add advancements onto your deck, you could get concerned that the thickness of the cards are changing. But strictly speaking, you should be deciding whether or not you are going to press your luck before you feel the card underneath your top card. So you could probably say that this could be taken advantage of if someone wanted to grope their deck in front of you, but in general, you should be deciding whether or not you're going to move your top card before you feel the next one to know whether or not it has a bunch of advancements on it. Because then you could sort of signal to yourself when there's going to be red symbols or not. I don't think it's a big deal in this particular game. I don't think it'll come into play. I think it could be a problem in future games that use the card crafting system like this one does. So in this game, no, I don't think it's important. Yes, technically you could glean a little bit of information while you're shuffling. Just don't be that guy. Play this fairly and everyone will have a nice time. Thanks for watching my review of Mystic Veil. It's been a really fun experience to try and do a review and um, it was really flattering that they thought of me to send that to. Um, if you have not heard, I have a live stream going on every other Friday on twitch.tv slash meeples included. That is Games on the Rocks. It is me and three other amazing women chatting over drinks about games. Uh, there's one coming up on Friday, July 1st. Uh, you can catch us there. I've been doing hangouts on my channel um, every 
Saturday or Sunday just dragging someone in from Twitter to talk with me about various game things. I am super proud and very humbled by all of your support on patreon.com slash maggiebot. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. Your money has helped me purchase a few games this month, and it is all starting to um, go toward buying a GoPro Hero 4 so that I can take you guys into my convention experience and show you a little bit of what happens at things like Gen Con coming up. So I should have just enough in time for that to happen. And I love you all. Follow me please here and send comments. And if you have any feedback about this particular review, please leave it here and I will get those questions asked if you have any any questions at all about Mystic Veil. Vale. Uh, love you all. I'll see you later. Bye.